I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the July 2022 Chemnitz Dye Along Livestream where I dyed some yarn inspired by my favorite ice cream flavor, mint chocolate chip. In the livestream we finished one colorway and then got partially through our main colorway. I swatched three different brown colors, both on some yarn but also just on our yarn mop to determine which brown would feel chocolatey enough. I know chocolate chips can look really black, but I wanted to feel that warm chocolate in there. And I knew from past experience that chocolate brown tends to be very, very pink. But when I compared it to pecan brown and teddy bear brown, I actually liked that warmth in there when it came to speckles that I tried. And I thought that that would be great for the chocolate, especially when we layered some green on top. As for the greens, Spearmint Breeze is the winner, both because of its name and because of its hue. But in its concentrated form as speckles, it's brighter than what I want for my ice cream. And so I went ahead and speckled um, three skeins of Knit Pick Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, with our chocolate brown. And I also speckled three skeins of Knit Pick Swish DK with that same color. Um, Swish DK is 100% Superwash Merino. If you want to learn more about either of these yarn bases, I do have affiliate links down in the video description. And in this recap, I'm now going to add the mint to our chocolate chips. But before I add the mint, I kind of want to figure out what depth of shade I really want to get a soft mint color. It may end up feeling a little bit artificial, but honestly, the mint chocolate chip ice cream that doesn't look artificial has a white base because they don't have food coloring. So there's an artificialness to that mint color anyway. Off camera, I made a 1% stock solution of Spearmint Breeze. And then taking five 20 gram mini skeins of Will to Die For's Crazy 8, I set up five different cool vats to get a fast view of the depth of shade I would want for my ice cream. And I started with a 1% depth of shade where I used, because these are 20 gram mini skeins, 20 milliliters of my 1% stock. And then in the other containers, I added 10, 5, 2 and a half, or 1.25 milliliters of the dye before adding the yarn and stirring it around. Even though the dye isn't fully set, I would be able to use the colors that I'm seeing here to just help me determine how much dye I might want to use on my full skeins. Once all the dye absorbs into each of the mini skeins, we would have a 1%, 1%, 0.25%, 0 0.125%, and then 0.0625%. And I would say that these three are definitely too deep. And what I'm wanting you know, at first I didn't think that this one was what I wanted, but honestly, this might be, even though there's still a little bit more color, can absorb the right color. Because this one is looking kind of good, but it might be a bit too deep. So I think that our ratio of, what, like six and a quarter milliliters per 100 grams would be the way that I should start. And then if I need to add more dye, I can always add more dye. But I think that this will be my starting point. As for these samples, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of white vinegar to each of them and set them outside for a day or two to let the color absorb and then I'll steam set them. And I'll show them at the very end of this video. I could have gone and done this in mason jars so we could see more of the finished color right now, but I really just wanted to get a quick sense versus waiting a couple hours to see where I would want that color to go. And so I don't know if it's gonna match the ice cream picture, but this one says yummy to me and it makes me want ice cream. <laughs> so that's where we're gonna go. You know, the next few days will be so hot that I'm now out here with the five gallon bucket I used as our pre-soak about 37 and a half milliliters of our stock solution. And we're gonna dye all six skeins of the chocolate chip yarn together. Using this cold process technique, there's no acid in here yet. And I'm choosing to do this because 
we want a pastel color um, and we want it to be well distributed over the yarn. We don't want it to all strike too fast. And so let me go get all of the yarn. This is completely different to what I thought I was gonna do in the live stream. Oh, but that color is so good. Oh, but yeah, this is the way I would recommend to people anyway to get good color coverage sort of all over. Now, when I'm mixing things up with no acid in here yet, I am separating the stains and raising and lowering them. Um, and that is because sometimes if you have parts of the yarn that are stuck together, you don't end up getting color there. And there will be some tonal variation, but I'm okay with that. And I'm loving where this color is going. Now we need our acid. I'm going with probably, maybe it's approximately a cup of white vinegar. And I'm once again gonna just help stir things up. There's so little dye that we're using that it's hard to tell. There's still a little bit of color in the water, but a lot of it is, you know, in the yarn. And so now we just need to go get a cover. Hopefully we've been in focus, but I'm gonna get a cover, cover this bucket, leave it outside probably for about 24 hours. And then off camera, I will steam set this and that other yarn that I've set up, um, wash the yarn, hang it up to dry. And now we can finally look at my mint chocolate chip inspired colorways. I do have one last thing to do. We've got our yarn mop here. And hopefully I'm not gonna spill too much as I transfer our dye stock into this bottle. We really didn't use very much dye at all. But I'm gonna label this and store this for another project. But we have a little bit of dye on our syringes. Um, and yeah, we're gonna put this all on this yarn mop that we had used during the live stream. So I'm just cleaning these out to add a little bit more mint to this very, very chocolatey because of all of the speckles that we did colorway. And then the last thing that I'll do with this is we've got some dye in this cup. I'm gonna put it in in a few spots and just literally wipe and mop out the green to try to leave no dye behind. And also just to add a little bit more mint to this mostly chocolate yarn. So I'm gonna steam set that. And now let's see the finished dry yarn. And here is the dry mint chocolate chip ice cream yarn. I am so, so, so glad that we went for chocolate brown for the speckles. I think that using this pinkish brown with the green on top really does give that warm brown feeling. It's not feeling as pink to me anymore now that it's dry. There may be a few like pinkish elements here or there, throughout the yarn, but overall it feels like chocolate. It reminds me of the uh, milk chocolate Andy's Concrete I was talking about in the stream where they used in the custard melted chocolate chips and blended it in. So you got these little like streaks of chocolate. Mwah, amazing. <laughs> I'm also just really, really happy with the amount of color coverage that we got. Uh, I am now forgetting the exact depth of shade that I went with. Um, but let's take a look at our mini skeins. There is our lightest depth of shade, which I think was the one that we went with. Yeah, this would have been seeming like a little too much food coloring for me. Um, there we've got the deepest. So this color isn't that dark. Spearmint Breeze isn't that deep of a color overall. Now, there's no reason why we had to do this on our mini skeins of yarn. We could have taken a look at the depth of shade by just mixing these colors and even putting in something white like a paper towel or a cotton ball to absorb that color to get a feel for how much I wanted to use on the yarn itself. But this did work really well. And as a fade set, it's adorable. You know, there's some element in here that almost feels tan. 
And I don't know if it's sort of like the opposite of some toning and that like when this color is very light on top of the bare yarn, it sort of leans a little bit more yellow. I think that's probably what it is. Or I'm not sure because on the deepest one, there's some elements that almost feel like, I don't know, dirty. I don't think there was something in my steamer basket. I suppose it's possible there was some residual color in the steamer basket. It doesn't like bother me as a whole, but I did just want to point it out. Speaking of the yarn mop here, you really, really feel the pink. On camera, it might look a little bit yellow, but the browns look like a dusty rose, and that's looking very, very reddish to me as opposed to brown. In fact, uh, over here, I can see some more of the, in here, the, probably either the teddy bear brown or pecan brown compared with our chocolate that's all over. I did take some individual images of each of those swatches, so that way maybe I will remember in the future which is which is which is which, um, but, yeah, just the chocolate brown is nice and red. It's just with the green on top of it. On our mint chocolate chip yarn, it feels like a little bit cooler toned or the warmth helps with the chocolate feel. But on its own, it does feel very, very red to me. The yarn mop could have taken some green. I think that if I had layered my mint green color all over, that that really would have given this a super chocolatey mint ice cream feel, but I also do like it as it is. And now here at the end, we're back at the beginning with the first yarn I dyed in the live stream. This yarn has a little bit of all three of the brown colors that I tried. You can see a little bit more of the reddish chocolate brown here. And there are some notes of the pistachio green which I considered, but ultimately it wasn't blue enough. It was a little too muted to really give that mint feel, that artificial green color that we associate with mint flavor. Huh, I wonder, like, I've definitely had like mint ice cream where it's been white, so I'm assuming a lot of the green comes from food coloring, but now I'm curious and I sort of wanna like blend up a lot of my mint and see what color I get, but I digress. And here we have it, all of the yarn that I dyed inspired by my favorite ice cream flavor, mint chocolate chip. And now it's time to take a look at all of the yarn that you dyed inspired by this inspiration photo, or this month I actually gave you an option to dye yarn inspired by your own favorite ice cream flavor, because I want to acknowledge not everyone may be as obsessed with mint chocolate chip as I am. And so I'm curious what other like ice cream type flavors you guys came up with. When I'm sharing any pictures, if someone mentioned another flavor, I'll try to pop that on the screen, but I have no idea what the submissions are gonna be like yet. But anyway, if you would like to be featured in future Chemnitz Dialogues, just share the yarn that you dyed inspired by the photo or theme with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue on Instagram or reply to the inspiration photo on the public Chemnitz Facebook page. And I'll pull as many pictures as I can to feature in the recap. I don't yet know what August's dialogue theme will be, but make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications. This is the best way you can make sure not to miss the dialogue live stream, and it really helps out the channel a lot as well. If you love the yarn that I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. You can search the shop for Chemnitz Dialogue and you'll see yarn that can't, comes up for, well, whenever this is listed and past dialogues. It's an easy way so you can sort and find yarn in case there's a, a colorway for one of these dialogues that you would like to bring home and turn into something fabulous. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.